Chingyi is a shiny new agent coming in the 1.1 update for Zenless Zone Zero. I'm sure you're wondering how to build her once you get her from her channel. No worries everyone, I'll help you with that. Hey everyone, I'm Azur and in this video, how to build Chingyi in Zenless Zone Zero. Chingyi is an electric stun type character with an easy playstyle. She applies her damage through normal attacks like other characters like Lycaon who are more off-field presences. Chingyi thrives on field, requiring active gameplay. Her unique mechanic revolves around building up her stun damage multiplier as she attacks enemies, particularly in her flash connect state, which is powered by flash connect voltage. Chingyi's skill applies a lot of stun and her basic attacks deal significant electric and a bit of physical damage. Her playstyle is like Anbi and other stun based agents. The goal of these characters or agents is to set up your damage healers or DPS agents for the big damage window. So now let's take a look at Chingyi's kit. Her basic attack, Pen Ultimate, launches up to 4 attacks forward, dealing physical and electric damage. Her basic attack combo has 4 hits. The first hit is a vertical spin into a downward strike. The second hit is a horizontal spin into a forward strike. In the third hit, she performs an infinite spinning lightning storm. This combo doesn't get interrupted if you dodge, so you can still register it as his third hit. If you hold it down, she spins infinitely until the fourth hit, which is a downward smash. If you spun long enough, this hit is enhanced with an upward strike plus a downward smash. During the third and fourth hits, your anti-interrupt levels increases, but you're not invulnerable, you will still take damage. Be cautious as some attacks can still deal some damage. If you hold down the basic attack button, she performs a weak rush attack that deals electric damage. However, if her unique resource bar is up 75 at least, holding down the basic attack makes her perform the enchanted moonlit blossoms combo. This consists of 5 rush attacks and a final hit. During this move, you become invulnerable on the final hit, which is used for avoiding big damage. Also could count as a dodge counter. Alright, so the Flash Connect Voltage is a resource that Chingyi generates by dealing electric damage. This resource is crucial because once it exceeds 75, she enters the Flash Connect state by holding the basic attack button. So she can use the enchanted Moonlight Blossoms move that increases damage and also increases the sun damage multiplier. Right, the bar fills up when she deals electric damage and it can hold up to 100 charges. Next up is her special attack, Sunlit Glory. When you don't have any energy, uh, this special attack is just a quick strike. So it's not really worth using. But when it's enhanced with energy, it's a spin attack with a huge damage and daze multiplier. It costs 60 energy to use initially and can be extended with 20 additional energy. Azur here from the future. Sorry to interrupt myself. But as I was making this video, there's leak about Qingyi that just dropped, which details the changes in her kit. So you can just refer to these changes when I talk about her kit and her multipliers. There are five buffs to her multipliers. First is the stun damage multiplier. For her core passive, if you max it out at level seven, it goes from 60 to 80%. So that's a significant boost for damage for your team. It goes from 3% per stack to 4% per stack. That was her original multiplier when her Wenjin only gave self damage. Now her Wenjin gives a team damage buff and now they reverted the stun damage multiplier from 3 to 4, which was her original one before the Wenjin change. So now her Wenjin is really good. Probably the best Wenjin in the game when it drops. The second change is her 5-hit combo of charge normal attack, which is the EMB. With flash connection, that gains 40% damage reduction effect. So when you're using that, you get a 40% damage reduction. Really good for survivability seeing she will be spamming that skill most of the time. And the third change is her third hit of the basic attack or EMB. These multiplier per hit at level 12 goes from 16.5% to 29%. So that makes her stun much faster, maybe better than Anbi. So when I talk about 
the comparison with MB later in the video. Take note of that. And then number four is stun damage multiplier on the Mindscape 2, which is around 133%. It got buffed to 135%, so a 2% bump, which is not really significant, but it's still great overall. And lastly, her dodge scatter days multiplier. Level 12, it got nerfed a bit because it's kind of high. So from 366, it goes down to 286.1% days multiplier on her dodge counter, which is not too bad. Okay, so this leak came from, from the 1.1 beta version 5. So take that with a grain of salt, but seeing these changes or buffs and debuff to a Chingy's kit, she is looking like a really good pull on her channel. Okay, back to my past self. So it's a pretty good special attack and it has a high days multiplier. Use it as often as you can when it's enhanced. Moving on to her dodge assist and assists. Dodge counter lingering sentiments. This is just a standard dodge but it includes a decent days multiplier. Her assists also are really good. They have the highest days multipliers in her kit which is pretty normal for stunners. The defensive assist graceful embellishment has a days multiplier of 400 to 500% at level 12 if you upgraded it that high, which is really great. So use it as much as you can, those defensive assists. Her chain attack and ultimate, her chain attack is Tranquil Serenade. A Chingy launches a series of powerful strikes over a large area in front, dealing massive electric damage. When this attack hits an enemy, the skill's damage increases by 3% for every sack of subjugation in core passive eternal season so we'll talk about that later in the video chingy is vulnerable while using this skill and her chain attack is quick but whether it's worth using depends on your strategy it has a decent days multiplier but with a higher damage multiplier uh, it could be worth using if the enemy is already stunned so you can take advantage of the high damage multiplier uh, this chain attack is mostly for damage and not for days her ultimate is 8 sounds of Danzu. Ching Yi launches a series of powerful strikes over a large area in front and then followed by a finishing move which deals massive electric damage. Similar to her chain attack, Tranquil Serenade. It's not very impressive damage wise if you compare it to your DPS's ultimate. So it's better to save your decibels for using your DPS's ult. Moving on to her core passive, Chingy's core passive is called the Eternal Seasons. Each time she attacks with the EMB or Eternal Blossom, she applies stacks of subjugation on enemies. So it's like a debuff. Increasing their stun damage multiplier. The stacks reset whenever an enemy recovers from being stunned. Chingy can apply up to 20 stacks of this with non-boss enemies receiving double the effect. So she can apply 40 stacks to non-boss enemies. Moving on to her additional ability. She has an additional ability that increases her days build up by 20% when she is paired with an attack agent or, or a pub sec agent faction in her team. So she works well with Jane Doe and any attacker. She can also work with Ju Yuan. She also gains extra attack power based on her impact points. So if you increase her impact stat, she also gains attack, making her even more formidable as long as she's properly built. You can boost her attack using this additional ability by up to 600 if her impact is greater than 120. So it's pretty easy to proc her additional ability. Now let's talk about her rotation and combat strategy and how to play her playstyle. So her rotation is relatively straightforward once you understand her mechanics. If your EX special is available, use it first and then switch to her basic attacks. Use the defensive assist or assist follow-ups if you can. When she enters the flash connect state, use it to stun the enemies. And your goal is just to build up voltage and apply debuff subjugation stacks so your damage healer can come in and take advantage of the extra damage and also the stun on the bosses or enemies. If you're fighting non-bosses just like mobs, you can just use her EX special since it's AoE and it will most likely stun or daze them. If you don't have energy, you can just use her basic attack and then hold it on the third attack so you can 
make her spin the attack has anti interrupt so you won't be interrupted as much but you still can take damage most of the non-boss enemies should be stunned by just performing the basic attack combo so you don't need to worry about doing the full rotation as for bosses you can start with basic attacks or use her enhanced special attack again if you don't have energy you can just use her basic attack and the lightning spin so you can fill up her resource bar and then finally finish with enchanted moonlight blossom final hit this should stagger the boss and you can switch in your damage healer after that so she's pretty easy to use uh, not clunky at all moving on to skill pri priority it's recommended to max out her basic attacks first since that's her bread and butter but all her abilities have good days multipliers so you can level them up as well but priority is basic then core then her special attack then assist then dodge then her chain attack or ultimate all right so moving on to wenjin's her best in slot wenjin is her signature weapon which is the ice jade teapot it's a limited five star wenjin that boosts her impact and also provides a damage bonus to the entire squad it has the skill ringing melody when a basic attack hits an enemy gain one stack of terrific each stack of terrific increases the user's impact by 0.7%, stacking up to 30 times and lasting 8 seconds. The duration of each stack is calculated separately. Upon acquiring terrific, if the equipper possesses stacks of terrific greater than or equal to 15, all squad members' damage increased by 20% for 10 seconds. So this is just the base level, the base star level. So it could, it's gonna be better when it's maxed out. So it has a base attack of 714 and an impact stat of 18% at level 60 at star level 1. It gives Ching Yi a bonus of 39% impact if you combine the secondary stat of 18% and the total bonus impact when you stack up to 30 times. The team gets 20% damage boost at max stat. So pretty good engine there. Complements her playstyle and kit and really makes her have a lot of bonus impact if you don't want to pull for that and if you already have other s rank wenjins like the restrained and hellfire gears you can use those so the restrained offers 18 percent impact similar to the jade teapot and up to 30 percent increased days inflicted from basic attacks which is really good since her basic attacks are her bread and butter hellfire gears however provides also impact and some energy regeneration though less effective than the restraint so if you have those you don't need to pull for her engine you can use those instead or if you just want to go for a ranks these are your options you can look at precious fossilized core also with impact secondary stat demara battery mark 2 steam oven and six shooter for b rank you can consider vortex arrow for a budget wenjin until you can get an a rank or an s rank so the six shooter is battle pass wenjin that enhances day's accumulation with a charge mechanism really good too you can pick that as your second engine if you want the Mara battery mark 2 is a free option it also boosts electric damage and energy generation though it's not really as good as the other ones you could also take a look at the steam oven which is another free to play option with energy regeneration and also a stacking impact increase so if we have those three and the precious fossilized core you can use those as well so talking about her best sets for sunners including ching yi they all benefit from the shock star disco four set piece for its days increase so the four set piece provides six percent impact and allows you to inflict 20 percent more days on the main target with basic attacks dash attacks and dodge counters her it synergizes well with ching yi's kit enhancing her ability to stun enemies quickly for the two piece you have a bit more choice here but swing jazz freedom blues or woodpecker are solid choices so keep in mind that ching yi requires 80 energy for her full ink special you can activate it with 60 but 80 is better swing jazz might be more favorable because it gives you more energy regeneration or you can use freedom blues or woodpecker if you want all right so if you don't have the four piece shockstar disco set you can go with a woodpecker electro four piece this is a generic offensive set providing crit rate and an attack percentage boost. So while you're farming for your Shockstar Disco, you can use a four set, of, four set of these and a two piece that you want like Swing Jazz or Freedom Blues. 
As for main stat for drive this four, you want crit rate because Chingy already gains a lot of attack from her core skill if you increase her impact stats. So you don't need the attack percentage or attack ratio. But if you don't have the crit rate piece, you can use attack ratio instead. For drive this five, you can go with electric damage bonus or attack ratio or penetration ratio, whichever ones you have. But electric damage is the best one. All of them are good options. If electric damage bonus isn't available, you can use the attack ratio again. But it's not better than the electric damage bonus because her attack increase when you increase her impact. And lastly, drive this 6, which is the most important one. You guessed it, you should put impact percentage here. It is the most crucial stat for Qingyi. It helps her stun enemies faster and also increases her attack percentage when you increase her impact. Alright, so for substats, just focus on crit rate or crit damage, attack percentage, also penetration is good. You should avoid the defense stats or AP stats, but as usual, the game will give us defense or HP stats whether we want it or not. Okay, so let's compare her with another electric stun agent in the game. So according to other content creators, Anbi actually stuns faster than Chengyi in many scenarios, including Shiyu defense. Thanks to Jello Zone Zero for sharing his testing results. This was unexpected since Chingyi is a limited 5-star character while Anbi is a free unit. Anbi benefits more from her ascension passives than Chingyi does, especially at lower investment levels according to Jello. His clear times in artifact domains and against weaker bosses, his total Team clear times between Chingyi and Anbi were almost identical. However, when he brought Chingyi to Shiyu defense, Chingyi's team cleared it faster due to her damage boost via her subjugation stacks. Although he said Anbi stunned quicker. So also, Chingyi is easier and more enjoyable to play. Anbi can be interrupted or she can miss her attacks when the enemies just go back and she misses her EX special. I've suffered that problem too when using Anbi. So Anbi might, might be a little more clunky if you compare her to Chingyi. While Anbi stuns faster, Chingyi's ability to boost damage during stun windows make her superior character for Shiyu defense and potentially future content because she increases the stun damage multiplier with her core skill, subjugation sacks. If you invested more on Chingyi, particularly with higher stats, on your DPS like Ju Yuan or better gear, you could see significant increase in clear times. Because Ju Yuan is a first DPS agent, she can work well with Chingyi's stun abilities and damage window. Alright, so moving on to team building, one of the cool things about Chingyi is that she works on almost every team. For example, on Ellen team, she still gets her buff because Ellen is an attacker. So all Xingyi needs is an attack agent and she procs her additional ability. Uh, this makes uh, team building more versatile. Uh, Xingyi is a universal stunner, making her a valuable addition to many teams. She's quite good even on teams where you wouldn't expect her to excel like Ellen's ice team. Though Lycoon might still be the better option due to his ice resistance debuff and also his stun debuff. Chingyi is still a strong choice if you don't have or plan to use Lycoon. Lycoon doesn't have banner or channel yet so it's just pure luck to pull him. So for our sample team here we get Chingyi Sukaku for the support and attack increase and Ellen for DPS. Another team we could look at is a Ju Yuan team. So Chingyi pairs excellently with Ju Yuan maximum, maximizing the stun opportunities and enhancing Ju Yuan's burst potential. This combo is especially beneficial as Ju Yuan is your primary DPS, providing a smoother and more reliable gameplay experience compared to other options like Anbi. So for this team, you're looking at Qingyi, Ju Yuan, and Nicole. So this team focuses on pulling enemies together and stunning them with Qingyi's AoE attacks with their basic attack or EX special. And then you can use Resonabu for the Bangbo to help you grouping the enemies. And Chingyi can also be played effectively with any attack type character to maximize her utility in the team. You can pair her with Soldier 11 or Jane Doe, upcoming character in 1.1. So for a Jane Doe team, 
this is what it looks like so Chingy, Jane Doe and another anomaly agent like Grace maybe or you can put Rina there or a Seth this composition leverages Jane Doe's ability to build up physical anomalies with uh, which Ching Yi can then exploit. She can slot in any team as a center, like on a fire team with Soldier 11, Ching Yi Soldier 11, and Lucy, for example, if you don't have a center like Koleida yet, or in an electric team like Anton, Rina, and Ching Yi. So she's pretty flexible in terms of team building. All right, so we have a question here. Can Ching Yi be a DPS agent instead of a center? Well, Ching Yi can deal decent damage. Her multipliers aren't that bad, but she doesn't compare to characters like Ellen, Ji Yuan, or Soldier 11 in terms of damage dealing. Her gameplay loop revol revolves around building her unique resource with her third basic attack. So just fill up the bar, stun enemies, and that's it. She wasn't really built to become a DPS, but when we get to her Mindscape Cinemas, we'll talk about that more if she can fill the DPS role. Okay, so moving on to bamboo options for Chingyi teams. If you're playing Chingyi with G1 and Nicole, it's recommended to use Rasana Boo so you can group them up together. And you can also use the new Bang Boo. The Officer Koi could also work if you're using G1 since Ching Yi and her will activate its ad additional ability, which is Provisional Security K9. When there are two or more Criminal Investigation Special Response Team uh, characters in your squad, after using an active skill, there is a 50% chance to trigger the skill one more time, up to a maximum of three consecutive triggers. Uh, the Bang Boo Chain Attack increases the damage by 35%. Its active skill bites and tears at the enemy, dealing physical damage. So pretty good DPS Bang Boo there. This skill can be consecutively triggered up to two times. Its chain attack also deals massive physical damage. I don't know which one is better yet without actually testing them in the game, but most people skip the Bang Boo chain attack in favor of more on-field time for our DPS during the sun window, so it might not matter in the long run. I don't usually use the Bang Boo chain attack because it eats a, a lot of stun time there. i rather use the DPS to deal damage. For other elemental teams, use the corresponding elemental bang boo. Like for ice teams, just use the shark boo or penguin boo. And electric teams, use the blood boo. If you pair a Ching Yi with Jane Doe, you can use the lucky boo from the friendship supervision event. So if you have that, if you participated in the event, you can use that as well. Okay, so let's move on to her Mindscape Cinemas. As for her Mindscape Cinemas, her M1 is Insulation Breakdown. When Ching Yi enters combat, Flash Connect voltage is instantly restored to its maximum, so full bar, when she enters combat. The accumulation rate is increased by 30%, so that's increased. When using her basic attack, Enhanced Moonlit Blossoms, its Flash Connect voltage is at its maximum. The attack will reduce the defense of the enemy if it hits by 15%, so that's a 15% defense debuff when her gauge is at 100% and also increases Ching Yi's crit rate. Again, the enemy uh, will increase by 20% for 15 seconds. So this is a great defense debuff against the enemy and also increases her daze and damage potential. So she can creep closer to that DPS role. And her M2 is minimal effort, maximum impact. Each stack of subjugation in core passive eternal seasons increases the stun damage multiplier to 133 of its original value. When Ching Yi's attack hits an enemy and the stacks of subjugation she applies reaches its maximum stacks, her daze to the target increases by 15%. So this means more damage increase with her subjugation debuff. That's 33%. And she also increases the days. So again, pretty good Myscape Cinema upgrade here. I think one is the best and then two is the second best in terms of investment. Her M3 and M5 just boost all skills by two. So we're going to skip those. M4 stable arc barrier upon entering or exiting flash connect state gain a shield equal to 10% of Ching Yi's max HP. If a previous shield is still active when the shield effect refreshes, Ching Yi generates 5 energy. 
This energy generation effect cannot be triggered, I mean can be triggered once every 10 seconds. This Mindscape Cinema increases her survivability and energy regeneration. This could be useful in the new Shinyu defense mode, but not a must-have, but good nonetheless. And it's one step closer to her M6, which we'll talk about in a bit. So this could have synergy with Ben Bigger and Seth Lowell, who can provide shields. Not sure if anyone else can provide shields, but this, in my opinion, is the weaker of her cinema upgrades. Alright, so lastly, we have her M6, which is called 8 Meridians, the interrupt level of... Basic attack enhance, enchanted moonlit blossoms is, is greatly increased, and the crit damage is increased by an additional 100%. So with their M1 increases critical rate, and this one increases crit damage by 100%. When Chingyi hits an enemy with her basic attack enchanted moonlit blossoms, the target resistance to all attribute damage is reduced by 20% for 15 seconds. So this is an absolute game changer of a Mindscape Cinema. She can now debuff all resistances on top of her defense break from her M1 and stun damage multiplier from her M2. So if you can get her to M6, which is whale territory, she'll be the ultimate stunner, debuffer, and maybe sub DPS or DPS agent you'll have. And she will be able to help any element team even if she's off element thanks to the universal resistance debuff of 20% for 15 seconds. So really good M6 here and you could use this upgrade to make her a DPS if you want. Now should you pull for Ching Yi? If you already have an S rank stunner like Kuleida or Lycoon and you're satisfied with MB for your second team, you can safely skip her. Yes, especially if you've already built those S rank agents and Anbi. If you want to replace Anbi with Ching Yi, that would be really great. It's she's easier to play, but you will lose out on your investment on Anbi. So keep that in mind. If you don't have an S rank stunner yet, I suggest pulling for her because she is an excellent stunner and she can slot into a lot of teams. And she's easier to play as well and not as clunky as Anbi. Uh, she won't miss a lot, but that's just my opinion. If you like her design and kit, uh, you should go and pull for her. After all, the game is supposed to be enjoyed and we're supposed to have fun. All right, so closing thoughts. Uh, Chingyi is amazing. She's easy to play and re she requires active gameplay. She'll be in your front lines most of the time. Uh, but if you understand her mechanics, she's really easy to play. And if you listen to the guide and build her properly, she'll be an amazing stunner for your team. Her versatility and high damage output compared to other stunners make her a top tier character in ZZZ. Her ability to fit into almost any team combined with her powerful stun mechanics set her apart among all the stun agents. Whether you're running an Ellen or Zuyuan team, Chingyi is a fantastic choice. Okay, so that's all I have for now. It's a really long video, but if you found this useful, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss future build guide videos from this channel. Really helps the channel tremendously, so we appreciate you doing that. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.